today we will discuss about stress strain diagram for mild steel during tensile test so welcome to my youtube channel mechanical engineering management like share and subscribe at the end of this video you will be able to understand proportional limit elastic limit lower yield point upper yield point ultimate point fracture point true stress strain curve so be concentrate over here see the whole video and i am 100% sure you will be able to understand each and every points so the title is stress strain diagram for tensile test on mild steel so first of all the brief introduction about the tensile test it is carried out on a uniform bar throughout the gauge length a specimen is mounted in jaws of utm with which a gradually increasing load is applied the extension or elongation of gauge length is recorded and finally a graph is drawn between stress versus strain so it is a very simple so initially a specimen is prepared with the gauge length and then on the utm that means universal testing machine gradually increasing load is applied and each and every time the extension or you can say elongation is recorded and finally a graph is prepared between stress versus strain that is called as the stress strain diagram sometimes it is called as the stress strain curve so initially the specimen is like that so i am going to draw the stress strain diagram on y axis always the stress and on x axis always strain this is the initial point o and this is the straight line and here it is the a point and this a point is known as proportional limit proportional limit that means stress is directly proportional to strain during this oa line so it is called as the proportional limit so from point o to a is a straight line and here you can see which represents that the stress is proportional to strain band point a the curve slightly deviates from the straight line so that hooke's law holds good up to point a and you know that hooke's law is what stress is directly proportional to strain and that's why it is known as proportional limit next so in this region only the hooke's law holds good next so further if you increase the load on the universal testing machine then from a to b it is a curve and this b point is known as elastic limit so if the load is increased beyond point a up to the point b that means between this portion the material will regain its shape and size when the load is removed this means that the material has elastic properties up to the point b and this b point is known as elastic limit and the left side from this line represent as the elastic zone and right side of this line represent as a plastic zone so up to this line the material having elastic property and then it behaves like as a plastic material and up to here the specimen is like that that means there will be no any permanent elongation up to the b point now next if you further increase the tensile load on the utm then you will be reach to the point c and this point is known as yield point if the material is stress band point b the plastic stage will reach and that i have mentioned over here that means on the removal of the load the material will not be able to recover its original size and shape beyond point b the strain increases at a faster rate with any increase in the stress and that you can see in this figure the strain will increase at a faster rate so this is a very important point and the stress corresponding to this c point is known as yield stress and that is denoted by sigma y 
then if you further increase the tensile load then you will reach to the d point and this d point is known as yield point but it is lower yield point so you can say this c point is actually upper yield point so i can say it is upper yield point and that c and d that is particularly in case of mild steel only practically this a and b point are also very near to each other so sometimes it is considered as a unique point also so in case of mild steel it will be seen that a small load drops to point d immediately after yielding commences maximum stress required to initiate the plastic deformation is called upper yield point that means point c so once again look at the important point maximum stress required to initiate the plastic deformation or you can say maximum load that is required to initiate the plastic deformation is called upper yield point whereas minimum load required to maintain plastic behavior of the material is called lower yield point that means point d so this yellow color that is in between c to d that is called as the yielding joint so i can write over here this portion that represent as yielding that means after point c there will be some elongation and so that the specimen is little bit elongated here you can see once again i have shown this specimen that is only for understanding but there will be a very minor change in the length so now if you draw the line cc dash that is parallel to oa then it will be cut at c dash point to x axis now what is this the material follows dotted line cc dash on the graph on gradual reduction of load the left over strain on zero load stress so here you can see this is the zero load stress line and left over strain that means this portion o2 c dash is known as permanent set that means you can say permanent deformation so i can mention over here o2 c dash is called as the permanent set now next so if you want to see in detail then you can search on youtube vipul goti and so that you will see this channel subscribe it there are so many videos go to playlist there are so many topics that i have actually separated so that you can take the maximum benefits from playlist according to your interest to improve your knowledge now next this is also curve so if you further increase the tensile load on the specimen then stress also increases and this e point is known as ultimate point so at d point the specimen regains some strength and higher values of stresses are required for higher strains and that you can see in this figure after point d stress is also increase to increase the strain then those between a to d the stress or you can say the load goes on increasing till the point e is reached and corresponding to the stress at e point is known as ultimate stress sigma u and that will be the highest stress or in another word you can say the maximum load on the specimen the gradual increase in the strain or the length of the specimen is followed with the uniform reduction of its cross sectional area so during this d to e the cross section area is going to decrease uniformly so the specimen is like that cross section area of the specimen is decrease gradually now next the work done during stretching the specimen is transformed largely into heat and the specimen becomes hot in between point d to e at e point the stress which attains its maximum value is known as ultimate stress and this pink color portion is known as strain hardening 
Now, if you want to define this ultimate stress corresponding to point E, then it is like that. It is defined as the largest stress obtained by dividing the largest value of the load reach in a test to the original cross section area of the test piece. So, the load corresponding to E point divided by original cross section area of the specimen is known as the ultimate stress. Next, further increase the tensile load then you will reach to the F point and this F is known as fracture point. Sometimes it is known as the breaking point also and the stress corresponding to this F point is known as the breaking stress. So, after the specimen has reached the ultimate stress that means at point E, a neck is formed which decreases the cross section area of the specimen. So, see the specimen is like that. I think you can see over here the neck is formed and which decreases the cross sectional area of the specimen after point E. Therefore, the stress or load necessary to break away the specimen is less than the maximum stress. And this maximum stress that means ultimate stress. So, in short, we can say the stress at the point F is less than ultimate stress that is due to this necking and the stress corresponding to point F is known as the breaking stress. So, keep in mind that breaking stress is always less than ultimate stress in case of tensile stress on mild steel and this portion is known as necking. Because after point E, neck is formed and exactly at point F, the specimen breaks. So, exactly at point F, material will break like this and so that the stress corresponding to this F point is known as breaking stress. Now, this E2G that is called as the true stress. Now, what is true stress? If for each value of the strain between E and F, the tensile load is divided by the reduced cross sectional area at the narrowest part of this neck, that means at this portion, then the true stress strain curve will follow the dotted line EG. However, strain are calculated on the basis of original cross section area of the specimen. So, if you will take the actual cross section area of the specimen between E and F, then your true stress will increase and that is shown by the dotted line EG. However, practically the original cross section area is considered throughout the test so that the stress corresponding to this F point is considered as a fracture point. So, thanks my dear friends, press the like button to appreciate this video.